has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, patterned by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Well, there you have it, folks. That is the introduction to Darkest Dungeon. Uh, as always, I will be playing this uh, with my friends as characters. Uh, if you're seeing this, you probably are one of the characters, or will be, when we get uh, enough people to do it. Um, so, this screen is pretty important. It describes kind of the concept behind the Darkest Dungeon. Um, basically, it's just saying that It's a permadeath game, so, you know, uh, if you die, that's it, you're dead. Um, but that said, the campaign goes on, uh, because it's based around a myriad of characters fighting against a very large amount of bad guys. Anyway, uh, I'll get this campaign started. I have to... Uh, Wow. <laughs> so I um I first started playing uh, the Darkest Dungeon pre-release, so before it was actually released to the public, uh, and uh, it's had a lot of changes in the uh, year and a half I think that it's been released. Um, uh, at first there wasn't as much to the story as there is now. Uh, certain functionalities weren't available. Uh, it seemed a lot harsher um, in terms of the negative effects of uh, the uh, artifacts and things like that. Um, yeah, and obviously they have added a difficulty rating. Normal campaigns are the original s uh, settings for the game. Well, there is no time limit to win, the campaign will be longer and more challenging than Radiant Mode. Stygian campaigns are not for the faint of heart. Expect no quarter, no forgiveness. You must conquer the evil within a time and hero death limit. Also, many gameplay settings are locked. Um, I guess that's the one we're going to do. Uh, I get to name the estate now. Uh, I... generally go with the name Badgington. Those who know me quite well will get the reference. Um, so yeah, let's get it started. 
hopefully you can hear me over the music. The music seems to be quite loud, but you know, we'll see how it goes. You will arrive along the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Ah, so beautifully dramatic. <laughs> um, so yes, with the stagecoach destroyed and the staircase caretaker gone you will have to make the journey to the hamlet on foot and that's where we learn the controls app navigation you're currently in a room just move towards another room right stick blah 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 you'll see this come up a lot anyway so let's just have a bit of a wander towards our destination brigands have run up these lanes keep to the side path the hamlet is just ahead Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion, that all may hear of your arrival. as the enemy crumbles. Right. Oh, hello. Nothing we can really use to... Uh Leave nothing Whoa. unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. Wow. Okay, so... Reynold, who will be renamed shortly, has just been afflicted. Uh, which will cause him to contract some form of quirk at the end of this. On ambush, send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. is completely freaked out right now. Um, Exposed to a killing blow. Oh. And because of him being freaked out, he says things that are disturbing. And as part of that, he... Um, Uh, reduces the morale of other people in the party. Alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. 
corpses is another thing that's been included since the release. Uh, basically, injury and despondence set the stage for heroism or cowardice. They serve as an obstacle. Uh, positioning is very important in this particular game. Uh, where you're positioned in relation to the front of the queue uh, defines what abilities you can use at any time and who you can hit with those abilities. Their formation is broken. Yeah. Maintain the offensive. Alright, so we'll just remain here and check out uh, this chest. Hopefully, <laughs> it's not trapped, but it is. Uh, Alright, and we are done, so let's complete the quest and head to the hamlet. Breakdown of all the treasures we collected. Heirlooms are used to upgrade facilities, collected treasures used to buy uh, the supplies for quests and uh, pay for recuperation for uh, your people. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Reynold has contracted a Blutomania uh, and uh, Dismas is light sensitive and has received a positive quirk called Unholy Slayer. So we'll have a look at those Welcome home, in a minute. Such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Okay, so this is the hamlet that we are trying to help rebuild. lies in the shadow of the uh, ancient manor uh, up in the background. At the moment we only have access to three different areas within the hamlet. There is the stagecoach which allows us to recruit new heroes, the graveyard which allows us to see heroes that have died, and the ancestors memoirs which is basically a running tally of the uh, Women quest. and men, soldiers and outlaws. Fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Okay, so the cool thing is that hiring new heroes from the stagecoach is entirely free. Um, and we have a limit of nine heroes at the moment, uh, and we currently have four. Uh, also, we can upgrade both of those two things more uh, arrive foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned uh, so <laughs> it's so dramatic I love it so much uh, all right so I've just upgraded the stagecoach network and the hero barracks that means we can store more heroes and we will receive more heroes each day uh, all right uh, most will end up here covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. <laughs> okay, I have a death limit of 12, uh, so that's good to know. I'll try and avoid losing time, 12 heroes. you will know the tragic extent of my failings. And this is the story. Alright. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start renaming my peeps. Reynold will be Roan, because they were the first, actually second, to uh, put their hand up. And I'll just cycle through the colours. So, 
Rotten currently has an affliction of masochistic, um, which may become a permanent thing. It could be related to the fact that they are currently at stress 100 out of a possible 200. Uh, that means they will need to go into recovery in some way or other. Let's have a look at the quirks. Uh, so they are a warrior of light, uh, which is plus 10% damage if the torch is above 75, that's damage dealt. So the yellow obviously indicates a positive quirk. The red quirks on this side, which far outweigh the positive ones, as they will throughout this whole game. Uh, God-fearing, kleptomania, and a blutomania. Um, so God-fearing means that uh, Roan must pray for stress relief, and that's the only way they can receive stress relief. Uh, they are prone to stealing items, so when you find a cache of good stuff in a dungeon, they are very likely to take those and you won't and not share them. So you won't actually get benefit from them. Uh, a Blutomania is obsessed with cleanliness. I'm not sure what that implies, but we will find out as things progress. Um, so, now that Roan has been named, uh, I can't send them to the Abbey because it hasn't been unlocked yet. Alright, and then we have... Dismas, whom I will rename to Matt. Richards, if we have space, we'll find out in a sec. Looks like we do, so that's good. Uh, okay, so Matt has a bunch of positive quirks, um, plus 15% to stun resist, plus 2 speed, uh, plus 10 accuracy versus unholy, and plus 3 critical chance versus unholy. That's some good stuff. Uh, he is not allowed to gamble while in town uh, for stress relief because he's known to cheat, and he is light sensitive, so if the torch is above 75, uh, he will be doing less damage. So, yeah. There we go. Alright. Now, I have to check... Who is next on the roster. Okay. characters suit those two at the moment. I'm going to try and match people up to things that kind of make sense. Uh, however, yes, I think suit this one. Uh, so, uh, Vestal is a, basically a combat priest, uh, or cleric, I guess, if you're 
use the D&D uh, &D terminology. Um, they don't use blades, they use blunt weapons, and they use holy uh, healing spells as well as attacks. So they're kind of halfway between a, a paladin and a, um, and a cleric. But yeah. Uh, unerring is plus 10% damage on their range skills and mediator. Improved stress reduction while... Uh, sorry, meditator. <laughs> anyway. Uh, improved stress reduction while meditating and while camping. Unfortunately, she has negative quo... Uh, negative quirk, which is torn rotator, which is minus 5% to melee skills. Uh, or melee, if you want to pronounce it correctly. I don't ever want to pronounce it correctly because I'm crap. Alright, and next up we have a Plague Doctor. I'm a big fan of Plague Doctors. They're very versatile and cool. Um, and I think Paige suits that one quite nicely. seems to be plenty of room for that. Uh, okay, so Plague Doctor generally uses uh, poisons and poison blades and gases and potions and stuff. They're basically a combat alchemist. Uh, current quirks are um, tough, uh, so plus 10% max hit points. Misses the spot is minus 1% to critical hits. Um, and cove phobe means that she's scared of the cove location. Um, so yeah, um, plus 20 stress when there. So we will see how that goes. Let's go through color schemes. I reckon that one's the best one. Kind of matches Paige's colors. All right, and actually just check on Sam's colors, see what we got there. Yeah, let's go with that one. That's red color. Okay, radio. So uh, we'll end it there for now, um, and then I will do another video on the first quest shortly.